Bedrooms weren't very big. It was like all the sound the effects. Quite there would have been more people in there than there actually were in that, I think. Yeah, but um, it was it was good, but um, I don't think I could have spent that long it's a bit in there. claustrophobic. Very. Okay, right. we better Let's carry go. on. Let's go. So we just come out, um, and it was quite bad in there. Um, like in the trenches, it's like it's hard to explain, but they had to be in there for so many years, and. It would have been a hundred times worse. We just had to go in and we just walked through everything. Yeah, it's quite bad. Um, everything in there, you've got the gas mask smelling, and it's just. You can't move. Um, the museum's really amazing. Show it. Right. It's a good place to come to, but it really it doesn't even put things into perspective of how it must have been like. So. It's good to go, but um, I think the hardest is yet to come when we go see the graves. Oh, yeah. Going to. Yeah. 
sanctuary wood for lunch. Ooh. Have you bought um, carrier bags with you? Because we're yeah. sitting outside. Yeah. Where it's so you'll need to sit on your carrier bags. Yeah. It is pretty wet. It's been raining quite a lot. It's been tipping down the rain. And it's going to be tipping down the rain tomorrow as well. So you don't need your wetty boots. Yeah. But yes, I think we're going to. I don't know what we're doing actually next. Yeah. We are going to. She does the in between the items. Well, Sam Sam's hurt herself. Yeah, she's hurt her foot. <laughs> Sad. Take the toenail off. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Ned. So, where are we going then, Ned? Um, who could cross the summer tree? Going to find Daniel, who's my great uncle. And I'm going to tell you a little story about him. You're going to read his letters and you're going to get to know him. So that when you find him, you'll, quite, you'll feel quite moved, I think. <laughs> and then we're going to cry. And we're going to start with the last letter we wrote was um, Thursday night, September the 19th, 1918. He says, Dear Mother, I write a few lines hoping you're all in the best of health as it leaves me at present. Well, Mother dear, I received the papers dated the 14th last night, for which I thank you very much, but I've been anxiously waiting for a letter from you these last few days. It's nearly a fortnight since I got one from you. And you know how I look forward to getting all the news from home, so I feel a bit disappointed that the mail comes and there's no letter for me. You know I don't receive many letters. It's just Norman and John that writes to me and an occasional one from cousin Sarah and Miss Ward. So you see, mother dear, how I long for, for a letter from you. It might not be very long before I'm home now. I think they're gonna start and send, send us on leave a bit better than they have been doing. Um, we'll just have to be patient and trust in God's goodness. I did laugh when he said he'd fallen into a ditch up to the neck with his gas helmet on. Never mind, he's a good lad, and what a grand day it will be when we're all home together, God willing. Now, Mother dear, please don't send a parcel. You're going to vex me if you do. You need all the food more than I do, especially the struggle you have to get it, because at actually that point, rationing's kicked in, in 1918. I'm quite satisfied with what I can get. I think you'll be worse off than we are. So you see, Mother, I really couldn't expect anything from you, except can you please put a few cigarettes in the envelope when you write to me? and I'm quite satisfied. So you can tell them I wish to be remembered to them all. Now, the letter was censored at this point, so whatever he wrote in there was cut out with a pair of scissors. He said, now, I don't think I have any more to say this time, so I will close thanking you once more and my kind love to all at home. Nellie and the Burns and my dear mother, I accept the same yourself from your ever-loving son, Dan. God be with you all till we meet. How can you get that Um, so now we're here at Hodge Crater and we're just about to go find Daniel Stevenson. Um, that's Mrs. Um, Elaine. She's just read us the letter which I've just put before this video and we heard some afterwards to his brother and actually one from Nellie saying his death. So we're about to go find him and then we'll talk to you afterwards. That saved a she said, Dear Mrs. Stevenson, during these last few days when there is so much talk me. of festivities and rejoicings, and that's because the war is over, one can't help thinking of all the mothers and wives who can feel so little like joining in all that is taking place. In fact, I think the more the men come home, the worse it must be for those women whose men have made the great sacrifice and whose work is done. But if they see and know what's going on now, they must indeed be proud of their mothers and the way they are hiding their own feelings. And so many people say, how can the men have borne all they did, I feel inclined to say, and she's underlined it, because of their mothers. I hope you won't mind my writing and sending you all my sympathy in what must be such a hard time for you. I enclose a peace prayer book, which I think is rather beautiful, and please accept it with my kindest thoughts and in memory of a son 
who I shall always think of in the words of the poet as a very perfect knight. <coughs> his courage in great pain and his never failing gentleness and courtesy I shall never forget. I have wondered often how his widowed sister is as he often spoke of her and seemed to have her a good deal on his mind after the death of her husband. Hoping you are well yourself, I am yours very truly, Catherine. here is basically uh, five braves and three of them said that there's four soldiers in them and one of them says three and none of them are known and you look around this graveyard and literally there's six times the amount of our school um, it's pretty emotional and I'm quite glad we've been here now it kind of puts things into perspective and this is one of the smaller graveyards Two, three, Bridget! I come from Liverpool. Two years ago, the war was waiting for me after school. To Belgium and to Flanders, to Germany to here. I fought for king and country I love dear. It was Christmas in the trenches where the frost so bitter hung. Frozen fields of France were still no Christmas. We're at Tyne Court now. Let's go. It's like one of the biggest for the British, and um, it's really tall because these guys are really tall. We're gonna go. Ah! Quando sono solo sogno l'orizzonte manca le parole. Si lo so che non c'è luce in una stanza quando manca il sole. Se non ci sei tu con me, con me su le finestre, mostrai tutti il mio cuore che hai acceso. Chiedi dentro me. Luci che ha incontrato per strada of Yorkshire but we'll fill you in more about that tomorrow. So we haven't got much time left. So we're heading there, that starts at 8 o'clock and then we'll speak to you later. Bye! Um, we're okay, we've just got here and there are so many people here, it's crazy. Crazy, um, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll try and video some of it but I haven't got much time left. Bye! It's like 5.30am here and it's like 4 
in England and we have to be up because we're about to go to France and I feel so tired I'm actually not like a morning person at all so we're trying to get showers and it's <laughs> we're just about to go down underground to like where they um we're in France underground. yeah we're in France now bonjour <laughs> um we're gonna go in um, <laughs> we got up really early and I think we're all a bit hyped. Yeah, we got up at like five. Yeah, we're, we're over tired right now. Yeah. <laughs> And a family love and bravery. 96 years ago today, you lost your young life saving your king, your country, and your God. As your family are forever proud and honored to be related to you, I, your great great niece, am the first to visit your grave. And for that honor, I am eternally grateful. Since your passing, this world has become a calmer and more equal place. Your sacrifice was our warning, and you did not pass out of this world in vain. We will never understand the sacrifice you had to pay for us, but we will forever pay the greatest of respects for you. We feel as if we love you dearly as a family because of the honour you have given us. Jack, I am speech and wordless. All I can say is thank you for your sacrifice, bravery, and for giving me this life. Rest in peace, dear soldiers, I love you. From Emily, you break with me. Sky 
when we walked in fields of gold. When we walked in fields of gold. When we walked in fields of gold. Uh, we've just nearly finished our grave day. We've had like 13 stop sets, which is absolutely crazy. We're really shattered because we were up so, so early. Um, I got to go see my great, um, great, great uncle, and uh, he died like 96 years ago today. So that was quite emotional. Um, there's been a lot of tears and a lot of laughter and a lot of memories today. So we're at the beautiful Anglo French. Right now, so gotta go around and look at that, and then we're heading home, I think. Ha <laughs> ha 
Hi, we're in Ypres and it's our penultimate day in Belgium and we're Enjoy eating all. waffles uh, and chocolate. We've just bought bean and bought loads of chocolate. We they, are now... They gave me <laughs> sugar in a packet. Oh my God, that's amazing. In we've been really like... What have we had? What have we done today? We've done... Stuff. We've went... Yeah, we had to Tiet yesterday. Yeah. Oh, Talbot House. Talbot, Talbot House. Talbot House, where they all went and got drunk and had sex with lots of women. No, that wasn't in there. No, that, oh. wasn't, that was the opposite. That was to stop them. Oh, they went out and drunk there. Um, then we went to the shooting post. And now we're going to eat and we're doing lots of shopping. And we're buying souvenirs and eating. Coffee. Hey. And doing lots of fun stuff. What's um, actually in um, You got a bit of milk. Okay, you better
So 